I know it's, uh, I don't know how honest I should be, but in a way, like, I don't feel too bad. Okay, do you want to introduce Audrey? Uh, let's introduce Audrey first. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, uh, don't be shy, it's okay. Audrey flew all the way from, uh, please tell us where you're from, Audrey. Uh, hi, I'm Audrey, and I'm from Brunei. Um, I own and run a restaurant in Brunei called Little Audrey's. Awesome, yeah, and you've been a big fan, so you came to visit us, so we're so pleased to have Audrey with us today. She has a few questions, so let's get right to it. Uh, How would you feel if you were to sell Little Audrey's right now? Um, I think I'll be devastated. Because, mm -hmm. like, like, she's like my, it's, it's like a human to me, it's like my baby. Because I watched it from zero, growing up, like, growing up with me, like, mm -hmm. so, um, uh, in my first year, first year, especially the first year, first and second year, I worked there almost every day, right. and I was even, like, a chef at, at one point, yeah, it was very, very difficult for me, especially in the first six months, because my head chef actually left me, um, three months into opening, mm. so, um, I had no culinary background, no like management experience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I had to mend both the kitchen and the 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 front. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the front of house. So it was very difficult for me. But um, uh, I grew a lot from there. And I learned everything. For sure. Yeah. From scratch. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that 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 relationship that I have in my business is. Uh, something that I feel like you you, you share the same with me. Oh, well, actually, yeah, um, kind of, you know, in a way, I, I do share the same feeling. Yeah. So then, after selling seven twenty, you're asking me how I yeah, feel how about it, right? Because, yeah. um, is it the same heartache and everything? And for me, it's. I know it's. Uh, I don't know how honest I should be, but in a way, like, I don't feel too bad, I, honestly. Like I know a lot of people are gonna be like, what Wilson, I'm gonna smash yeah. the dislike button because like so many people are attached to the business. Yeah. They, it's like their blood, sweat and tears and everything, right? And they put everything into it, their identity. It's it's exactly. everything of theirs, exactly. right? It's like it represents yes. them, yes. right? So exactly. the, the success and the yeah. failure of the business is tied to you as an individual. Yes. Where that's the reason why you, you feel so much for it. When someone writes negative reviews, yes. you take it personal. Yes. Right? And you're like, oh my god, how can how can someone I'm think that? Exactly, I'm a failure and all these things that would generate. And I think it's a curse and a blessing at the same time where I run multiple businesses. And for me, I'm able to see this business as one identity. And my own identity is not attached to it. How the business does has no relevance of me as an individual. So if the business fails doesn't mean I'm a failure because I am a, because I'm running multiple businesses I need to have a clear mind and I need to like segment how I view these individual businesses and if I were to be su super attached like back then when I was running an event part of my business I was so attached to it and I was getting flamed online. A lot of people were saying bad things about it because they were saying, how, much, how can we charge for parking? How can we not have customer service? How can we not do this? How can we not do that? And for me, I took it so personally that I went into like a semi-depression for six months. Yeah, Like, I'm like, wow, because I took it so personal. I'm like, I spent two years building this project and how can you throw words out there so lightly without understanding the amount of work that I put in. Like, who are you to judge me? And then I got super, super sad. And, and throughout that time, I, I did a lot of soul searching. I did a lot of self-development. I did a lot of learning myself. And eventually I was able to get myself out of the loop. And, and like one common thing is that, and, and the biggest lesson that I was able to learn from that is that don't attach my self-identity with the business. Right? I can pour my heart, soul, and tears into this business, but this business does not represent me. It is only a vehicle for me to be able to bring my family on travels, for me to be able to bring goodness to the world, for me to share a lot of things to the world. Just because I sell it doesn't change who I am. 
So that's why after selling 720 Suites, I'm not sad. On the other hand, I'm super excited to go on to the next thing. I see it as a beautiful project, oops, sorry, that I was able to build and was able to have everything that I've learned to put into this vehicle and to learn and to grow it. And then now I'm able to sell it. So that's kind of the reason why I'm not too sad about it. Uh, I know a lot of mom and pops, that's the reason why they're not willing to hire people. They're not willing to trust other people because it's so close yeah. to their identity, right? And it's very, very difficult position. So for, for someone to be able to get out of the mindset is super important because that is also what hinders the growth of any restaurant or any business for that matter. For, for example, Little Audrey, if you don't trust other people because you're so identified with the business, it's very, very difficult for you to grow past that one location because you won't trust other people with your recipe. You won't trust having a manager <clears throat> take care of a new location for you. Right? So at the end of the day, even if you're looking at selling or if you're looking at growing your business, it's very, very important to be in the right mind space in order for you to be able to take that leap. Yeah. So you did come from a place of, you know, like attachment, just like, like, like me at the moment. Like I, I think I'm still attached. To <laughs> attached. So what, what was the, the one thought that, like, like, made you like break through from that thought of, you know, that attachment? Because we have, so know, what's the, the strongest thought that was, what was that thought process? The thought process really honestly was when I went into that semi-depression that I was telling you about. Like before I created this business, I was running multiple businesses on the side as well. And there's one business, it's an event business um, that we host an event. And after going through that event and going through all the turmoil and people like bashing us and like me taking it so personally because I spent so much time, my blood, sweat, tears into it and people were like smashing me, smashing me, smashing me to a point where I'm like, wow, like, I was so sad. Like, and then in turn, that's when I found help. Uh, and then they were telling me, don't have your self-identity attached to this, right? View, view this as a vehicle for you to impact the world, right? Whether it be little Audrey's to bring more happiness to the world or it could be any other business, right? It's only a vehicle for you to achieve what ultimately you want to achieve, which is whether it be impacting other people, whether it be your grandma's recipe, you want to bring it to the world, or you just want a vehicle to bring you the, the financial freedom and the freedom of time, freedom to, to be able to take care of the people and spend time with your loved ones, traveling around the world, right? These are all byproduct of your business. Business is only a means to an end. Right? So if you view it like that, then you're gonna be able to see that, hey, you know what? It's okay if this business fails. It's only one vehicle. I can create more, right? And ultimately what I wanna be able to do and create is a vehicle that brings me, a certain pl to, brings me to a certain place. So that's why when I sold 720 Suites, I'm not sad or anything. I'm so happy because I'm like, now I can spend more time with my wife and with my newborn. Yeah. Like, I can spend so much time with them. I don't need to continue to grow this. I don't need to continue to hustle as much. Now I have the freedom of time. I have the freedom of, of the, the financial freedom that I can now rest a little bit, work on my next project that has much more impactful to the world and to the people that I care about or for the causes that I like. I love mentorship so, 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 so much. So for my next business, I want to be able to incorporate the mentorship aspect to my next business rock bottom. So I was at a pretty low place as well. Mm. I was burnt out all the time. Right. I didn't see friends, I didn't see even family. Like right. in the same house, I'll be too tired to talk. Right, right. You know, to connect with people because I'll be just so tired and you know, um, so that took a toll as, as well. Mm -hmm. The relationship that I have with my friends and family. Mm. And yeah, always tired and then I um, burnt out at one point and I took a solo trip to Japan. Oh, last year, nice. yeah, I backpacked in Japan, so that was when I like, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot do this. So I left my restaurant for the first time for right. a month without contacting any of my staff. Oh wow! And that coming from like 
like a micromanager like myself, like I would, you know, dictate what happens you. every day, and like to disappearing for one whole month. And how did that come along? And I had like I was I've never been happier. Like, nice, yeah, nice. I was so yeah. happy. I was traveling. That's a big like, breakthrough. Oh, a big giant break breakthrough, and coming from a Asian traditional Asian family, my right, parents right. like what like. You're going to Japan on your own. Like yeah. I'm not. I booked the ticket. Like mommy not coming with me. <laughs> like it was supposed to happen. So miserable, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would take it out on my mom because my mom is kind of like my partner ish. She takes care of some of the stuff for me. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's like, uh, like the payroll mm -hmm. and like money stuff. Like she would go to the bank and typical of Asian yeah, family to take care of the money. <laughs> so I would do all the like you know the technical stuff. Right, 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 right with my staff and all the time stuff. So um so I'll take it out on her and my staff as well. Even then, even if it's just a small issue, I'll get so angry, so miserable. So mm. yeah, I'll take it yes. on them and yeah, I can see like 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 I mean we really need a break at that mm -hmm. So that's when I'm like okay. Don't project like, yourself yeah, in your identity. So like, I'm leaving, like, right, yeah. like like I think that was like less than two weeks before I flew off. Wow. I booked the ticket and I just went there. Right, right, yeah. right. And I didn't even plan the trip. So I <laughs> landed in Tokyo first and then I just like did everything. Did, yeah. Nice. That's fine. I Mount Fuji. Wow. Good for you. One guy, just two right. of us. So yeah. I was like, screw it, you know, I'm gonna just I'm Super gonna, happy. I'm, I'm gonna like climb this this damn mountain and like screw whatever happens in the lottery right now. Like you can scold me all you want, you can tell me how shit my restaurant is, but I'm up here, I want to Mount Fuji on my own. Nice. You know? Yeah. I don't care what anybody thinks of me. Right that's now. really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm me and that's it. Yeah. That's it. Like, I'm not. So you're not that attached anymore. Slowly, you're working there. Slowly, but I still find myself like, <coughs> like, like having that, 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 that anxiety. Thoughts. Yeah, anxiety. That's anxiety. one thing. One thing that I've developed after I opened this restaurant, I used to be a very happy person, like a relaxed, you know, whatever kind of person, like just like my brother. Mm. My brother is saggy. He's <laughs> so very chill, he's very like, you know, you know, like just a very happy, happy go lucky person. But, and I used to be like that growing up, I used to be a happy kid. But after I opened the Audrey's, I've got so much anxiety, like anxiety, mm. and just, I became a very negative person. Mm. Like, I always think the worst of everything. Like, and like, it haunts me even in other situations. Like anything that happens, like, I'll be like, oh shit, what if this happens, this happens, this happens. That possibility of something bad happening just scares me. And that's, that hinders me from taking up new opportunities or um, limiting myself uh, to, 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 to doing my best. Mm -hmm. Like taking any risks, you know. I think a big big part of it is yeah. is the culture right like what kind of culture do you want to build yeah. within your organization right but if you know the culture comes from the top right if the top is not the mindful is not right the culture spreads down your yeah. staff is not going to be right right yeah. not in the right mindset oh, so yeah. it's like super super important for you to be able to end up being the right mindset so if you go through some of the I guess like the training the modules that mm, I've been sharing yeah. with you right yeah. like those can be very helpful for you to identify and to have you have more clarity on what you're trying to build. And when you have clarity, you won't feel as confused and you won't be as much operating out of fear. It's very, very important to operate in an abundance. Abundance in terms of like, I have enough of everything, right? If you're always acting in front of, uh, out of fear, then you always think the worst of other people because you're afraid that someone's stealing from you, you're afraid that they have bad customer service, you're afraid that they're not gonna do as a good job as you do, and in turn harm your reputation, harm your business, harm your restaurant, right? So a big part of it is to be able to have that mindset of abundance, right? Have the good culture in place, identify the values, that what do you value? You need to be able to identify that that becomes the principle, the playbook, which you can give to your staff. Mm -hmm. And for them, you just need to let them know, operate out of these principles. And anything within this sandbox that I'm giving you is good to go. And you can trust that, hey, you know what, as long as that they're the same type of person that you are, they'll operate within that same type of sandbox. And you're gonna be able to trust that because you have a clear identification of values and principles that they're working within. 
and a lot of trust can be built like that. Culture can be formed like that. Whereas if you don't identify it, you just think that this person is not doing the way you, you want it to be done, but you're not giving them the rules, you're not giving them the sandbox, the book, which is super important. Right? And when you can identify that, it becomes so much easier for you to trust, for you to travel, and because you know for a fact that they're going to operate within this. And if they don't, then they're either a bad hire, then you can just fire them right away. You don't even need to worry. It's like, hey, you know what? Strike one, strike two, you're out. That's another thing that I struggle with. Yeah, everyone knows about this, so I get too attached to my staff. 100%, yeah. 100%, yeah. Like, yeah. like, they're like my brothers and sisters. Totally. All of them are like really young, actually. <clears throat> like, I'm 27 this year. A lot of them um, came to Brunei, 18, 19, right after, you know, because to make a living and yeah, I talk to them like my sister, my brother, and I take care of them. And and I find it very hard to to to, to not have not be attached emotionally. Hundred percent. With 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 my staff, and sometimes it's hard for me to tell them off or to talk to them about anything that's job related. Which is In why fear of you know hurting them or ruining our relationship, and you know, yeah. So I'm a softie myself, you know, I'm very, you know, sometimes even when I like, I try to talk some sense into myself and mm -hmm, tell mm -hmm. them about work, and then I end up breaking down myself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they'll be like, what's wrong with her, but I get very, I, I feel a lot, I'm a person that feels a lot, Right. and yeah, that's something that I really struggle with, communicating with myself and giving I think them constructive uh, feedback, uh, uh, even though I know that it's much needed. Mm -hmm. I just find it very hard. Like, I'm so worried about how they feel. Right, think. right, right. Like, are they gonna like leave if I will tell them this? No, 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 of course not. Yeah. I think a big part of it is when you're clear with your expectation. You know, the most difficult part is like working with someone that's like, hey, you know what? Yeah, I just do this. And you're like, huh, what are you talking about? And then all of a sudden you're like, no, 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 no. This is not how I want it. You can't be like that. And you start like telling them that you did something wrong. But when you're on the other side of the shoe and it's like, well, you didn't give me any instructions. You didn't give me a playbook. You didn't give me the parameters of what I can and cannot do. So a really big part of taking that stress away, taking that ambiguity away is to be clear with your instructions, be clear with your values and what you're trying to achieve. And once you identify those things, it becomes so easy for them to follow because they're like, hey, you know what? I know what's right, what's wrong. I know what Audrey likes, what Audrey truly values. Audrey values customer service. And Audrey gives us a $10 rule. And what that means is that within $10, I can give and an complimentary any items to any of the staff or any of the customers. So when someone comes in, uh, a kid comes in, they bought a bun and then they dropped it. What should I do right away as a staff? I should pick it up, clean it up and offer the kid another bun because it's within the $10 rule. I can make a decision within $10 and Audrey will be fine with it. I have trust because Audrey trusts me. She values customer service. And in turn, your customer is gonna feel super happy about that. Oh my God, why are they giving me a free bun? It's my fault. And yet they're able to give me something just because it's my fault. They're gonna feel super thankful. And when they feel thankful, they're gonna share it with their friends, their family, they're gonna become a lifetime customer. And for you, it's a good thing. Your staff feels like that, they did a good job. And you're gonna tell the staff, the staff's gonna be like, oh, that's a very good job. Because you give them a $10 rule, because they know you value customer service. Like that as a scenario where by you identifying your values, by you giving them the power, empowering them, you're gonna be able to see a lot more results on your end. Because everybody is different, like, all my, like I've got a team of 15 and all of them have like very different personalities. So, um, Which is yeah, why it's even yeah. more important for you to identify the rules, yeah. identify what you value, right? You sit down in a room with 15 of your staff and you tell them, me, Audrey, I value communication, I value integrity, and I value um, and uh, teamwork these three things I value and give them specific instructions on what does it mean and what does it look like when you value teamwork. 
Well, you know what, when there are shifts, you want to take care of other people's shift. You want to make sure that you always look out for each other. We work as a team environment just because someone else is failing uh, or let's say if they're like super slammed. It's our job and our duty to help them out. It doesn't matter what role you are. It doesn't matter if you're a manager. It doesn't matter if you're an owner. If it's super slamming busy, you'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. So for example, if there's the dishes, we don't have enough dishes, me as an owner, I'll go and wash the dishes because I value teamwork. Simple as that, right? That's a scenario where you can teach them and show them and you can lead by example. And when you do that, you expect no less from any of your team. So next time when you guys are super slamming busy, right? And you go in and you see this person just, you know what, they're in their own position and they're super clean, but the next door guy is like super slammed and is super dirty and I'm just standing around not helping them out. Well, clearly something is wrong. Clearly, you give them the expectation and they're not fulfilling to it, then you can talk to them like, hey, you know what, how come you're not helping out with your team? Then they can explain to you or they can be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Very, very clear expectations that allows you to hold them accountable, which they're working within your set of culture and your set of values. Super, super important. There's one thing that she keeps having recurring, which is um, despite having really clear instructions and parameters, for her, for her workers, but they still do the same mistakes over and over. So it brings a lot of stress for her because every time she needs to tell them off something, tell them off, and she makes her stuff stressed out. Mm -hmm. So for me, <coughs> I would say, what would you say? Yeah. I think it really comes back down to the culture when, when, when she hires, right? So yeah. for example, when you hire someone on board, because like you said, 15 people, they all think very differently. They all act very differently. Yeah. Just because they're talented doesn't mean they're a right fit for your organization, right? right? Just because they, they're a girl doesn't mean they like cats, as simple as that. But if you're a cat cafe, you need people who loves cats. So don't just hire girls, hire people who love cats. In the same scenario as hire people that are within your values. What do you value? When I ask you that question, you should be able to tell me right I'm away. Like, I've got so many in my head that I, I, I don't know what's more important to me. Like, Which is why you need to identify three. Three, three yes. Super three simple, three, three yeah. go with it, right? Okay. Three of them and go with it. Show your team, right? Mm -hmm. And if your team, and for example, you show your 15, maybe 10 of them are super amazing. Five, of, maybe three of them is struggling. They are good, you know they're good but then they're struggling to understand. That means it requires a little bit more of your mentorship and it requires you to give them a little bit more attention to explain to them, to elaborate to them. And two of them might just not fit in. They're good people, but they just, they just don't get it. Not because of them, not because of you. You guys are just not a match. Simple as that, it's okay. And it's okay to part ways and it's okay to be like, dude, I love you, Aaron but you, we just don't think the same way. It's simple as that. It's like dating, right? It's like you're not gonna date every single one out there. They're good people. Doesn't mean you're gonna date them. As simple as that. Identify the values. Once you have identified the, your values, you understand that, hey, you know what? We're not a good fit. You're an amazing person. Don't get me wrong. We're just not a good fit. So the two people that are not a good fit, then you can get rid of them. And when moving forward, as you filter it through, as you filter through all the B players, slowly you're gonna gain all the A players, the people that are so clearly identified with your values, so believing in what you believe in, and those are the people that you want. Your ideal outcome with your team is to cycle and siphon through all the C, B players and keep siphoning through all the A players in. And in time, you're gonna have a group of really amazing kick-ass people that can run your shop, that feels like a family, that you don't need to micromanage because they're running everything for you in terms of like they're going and working towards as, as a team. That's super important and super powerful. So in my case, right, I actually have a team of very, very good people. Like, there you go. Like A1, like A+. Plus. Right. They're all amazing. But there's gonna be like, there's been one or two that's like... The bad apples. The bad apples. Fire them. And I've been <laughs> trying. You have yeah, to. That's what Aaron's telling me like, all the time. Like, the bad apples, but it's, they would poison. The rest of the they would poison your A1s. It's not that they want to. It's just the negativity. 
Once you have friends that are negative, they influence you. They're toxic. They're toxic, toxic, right? Yeah. They're just sad all the time. And when you're around them, you're sad. As simple as that. <laughs> and when they gossip, you gossip, yeah. right? When they're always like gossiping about other people, like, oh, they're bad, oh, they're bad, or like all these drama stuff. And you know you attract more drama in your life. So get rid of them. Get rid of the toxic people. Like, I know he's, he's not good for me, like he's not good for the business, but I've been trying to like, oh, maybe I'll give him another chance. Like, I'm trying to talk to him, you know? Like, maybe I can, I can, you know? There's no point. Talk well, what's the, you, it, you, you need to give them, yeah. by you letting them go, it's actually a service you're doing to them. Because you guys are the, do you guys are not matching, right? If you guys are not matching, he, is you're doing a disservice for him by keeping him here. You're caging him in this environment that he's not happy. He's not happy, you're not happy. So by you letting them go, they can find someone else that fits their values, that fits their profile, and in turn, it frees them up too. Right? Because he's also done a lot for me, actually. Like, he's not all bad. Like, he's done good stuff, a lot of good stuff. He's helped me from the day one. Doesn't mean... <laughs> I don't want to seem unappreciative of what he's done for me so far. He's been there for me through the rainy days. Just that in the past year, I think, towards our third year, like, he's been different. Like, the rest of the team to like, oh my god, are you going to fire him? Do you know how much he did for you? Like, no, different. I think it's, it's like, very simple. You might, feel, you might look. You're like, thinking you know? about too much. Yeah. You're thinking too much, right? I think once you identify the right set of values, be super clear with everyone. For example, if you want to be fair, right? Go back, write it down. You know what? These are my values. This is what I want to see being executed. And if you don't execute it, it's okay. That might not be in the same same um, same wavelength, same values, whatever the case may be, right? And then you have three chances, right? On the contrary, if you live up to it, I'll give you a bonus, right? <clears throat> Every time I see you do well with this, positive reinforce them. By, by giving them, hey, you know what, I'll give you a bonus or something along the lines of that, right? Have an incentive program. So then that way you're awarding people that are living to your values and you are penalizing people that are not and it becomes really fair. So you're not picking on him. It's just like, hey, it's just not a good fit. Simple as that. Uh -huh. So I need to like think about it and narrow it down to what's important. Go. Super important to me, what's, you know. What's you the know, first tier, second yeah, tier, third tier, right? Yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. You know, what I can take and what I totally cannot take and identify it. Exactly. Go through the lessons, right? Go through the lessons, go through the modules, yeah. and it's just fi fine tune the first three and then you're good to go. The primary reason why I've been, you know, what I found, like the, how I found you is because I've been, I was YouTubing a lot, I was reading a lot, re uh, researching on um, uh, restaurant uh, uh, consultants and guidelines and things like that. It's because I'm actually thinking of moving to Australia in 2021. Oh, nice. Right. To um, because I've been dreaming of moving to Australia for ever, like since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, one of the requirements of to move to get a PR in Australia is to start a business, mm. and it's not a small scale business. It needs to be like six hundred to eight hundred Aussie dollars. Wow. Yeah, that's not like one cafe. No. That's yeah. like ten cafes right, right, or right. ten ice cream shops that kind of scale and so um, I've got one whole year less than a year actually to plan this out mm -hmm. and it's not gonna be fun in games I have no time to, to I can't make mistakes like I, I mean I can make mistakes but not the way I did right. with a lot of trees where you know I can fall down and get back up because I'm gonna be investing a lot of money in Australia and I can't afford to, to, mm -hmm. to you know to make big mistakes mm -hmm. it's gonna cost me Cause my wallet, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Right, right, right. So, um, I want to really think about um, everything, the structure, what I'm gonna do. This is why. That's I, good. How I found you. Mm -hmm. Like I, I watched a lot of those yeah, videos, yeah. but a lot of them were, mm -hmm. were shit. Like, they weren't <laughs> even like they're like you know some like, mm -hmm. yeah. But when I found you, I was like, oh my god, this is exactly how I feel. Mm -hmm. And he's you're just like dictating everything that I I wish I knew. Mm. In the beginning, so um, yeah, so I've got less than a year to 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 go through everything that 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 you laid out mm -hmm. in detail and think about all those. Things. 
Shoot me questions, yeah. like I'll definitely yeah. love to answer any of them. Just let me know. Yeah, but the difference now is that it's gonna be a lot more large scale. Don't 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 let don't be scared. Just because of the yeah. investment, like at the end of the day, if okay, investing, right? Yeah. A lot of investors, not a lot, real investors, they look at investments by percentages. Yeah. So, making a dollar off ten dollars, that's ten percent. That's a good income, or that's a good return for your investment. Does that make sense to you? A thousand dollars gives you a hundred bucks. That's ten percent as well. Hundred bucks is a lot of money for some people. For for other people, it's a dollar to them as well. But it is also ten percent. In perspective of things, when you're running a business and when you're running a restaurant, it's the same thing. The fundamentals are the same. Just because it's a hundred thousand dollar investment for a small ice cream shop doesn't mean the fundamentals and understanding your customers, identifying the values, having the right culture is not the same as running a million dollar business. It's the exact same thing. So don't let, just because the investment is bigger, the fundamentals is the same thing. Doesn't deviate at all. You go to any restaurants, culture, the people, understanding the menu is super important. I mean, these are all the things that we cover in the course, and you should definitely just dive into it and not let this overwhelming. Yeah, don't let the scale scare you. As long as you have your fundamentals right, you already have three years under your belt, right? But it's a. What scares me is being in a whole different environment at the same time. Because I'm moving there to a new country. Mm -hmm. I don't know the customers as well as I knew my customers in Brunei. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So this is a whole new environment, new culture, you know, um, new guidelines, new government roles mm -hmm. to think about. Because especially in the F&B industry, you got um, a lot of um, boards. Of the main, a, main thing you need to understand is, is, is really about the customer profile. That's the main, main thing. What you want in Brunei is very different from what you want in Australia. Super, super different, right? So it's really up to you to do the research, to understand the customer, what is it that they want, what is it that they need, and get into their psychological mindset of why they would want your concept and what are you providing to solve their problem. You're just a vehicle. What you're bringing is just a vehicle to help them satisfy something. Right? Whether it be like you're satisfying a bunch of office people wanting to have a quick lunch. So you're offering them something healthy because this is in downtown Australia. Something healthy, something fast, something um, nutritional, right? These are three things that you need to hit because office people, they need to grab and go. They need to go back to their, to their office. Right? You need to create a system that is easy for people to refer your customers or refer your shop because, hey, you know what, I'm working here. Hey, you know what, do you want to grab a lunch from Little Audrey's? Yeah, sure, you know what, I get $5 off, you get $5 off, here you go. We go order lunch together, right? So if you think about the psychological behavior of someone that is ordering from Little Audrey's in downtown Australia, you know for a fact that your phone line needs to be always, you need to have someone on the phone all the time. Right? You need to make sure that your online profile is like super good because people are going to be ordering online. And you, right? you need to make sure that your production is streamlined. So you're not going to have too many different um, offerings. You're going to have three or four. Tackle all the four proteins, right? Tofu, right? For the more health cautious uh, people, right? Um, chicken, right? Is it going to be chicken breast or dark meat? Well, you know what, dark meat a lot of people don't like because it's, it's too much fat in them, right? And they want something a little bit leaner, right? And then do they want beef or not beef? Fish is another one. So these are the four things that you offer, right? And then you offer these four things, you have an online profile, and then you have the proteins in terms of either brown rice or salad, probably not maybe right rice, right? These are the three different proteins, right? And the different sauces. Um, and now you already have, I just made you a menu for someone that yeah. is in Australia downtown, yeah. right? And it's like, that's a really cool menu for people to grab and go. Super fast and easy for you to make and produce. So for you to be able to understand where you're opening and who, what are you solving? What kind of problem are you solving? The problem you're solving, you are just a vehicle. Don't be attached to the Audrey's, right?
Your vehicle serves a purpose, which is to fill someone's need for convenience. Someone needs of their their um, of their um, them wanting to eat, right? And someone's needs to for them to be healthy and sustainable, right? These are the things that are hot right now. These are the things that people in downtown might care, which is very, very different from someone or a different area that you're having your shop in. Let's say it's a blue collar environment. They might not care about sustainability. They might not care about tofu. It's like, why would I pay 10 bucks for a bowl of tofu? Doesn't make sense, right? I want to get full because I'm a blue, blue, blue collar. I need to go back onto the workforce. I need to be working 12 hour days and you're filling me with a bowl of tofu for 10 bucks. Are you crazy? Right? They want something filling. They want something big, fat, and they want something that is just to fill them up, give them the energy and to move on. So understanding the psychic behind your customers are so important. So if you're moving to Australia, understand where you want to open, understand what problem you want to solve and then go from there. Don't let the scale of what you want to do scare you off. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. If you have any other questions, feel free to email me. I don't have questions. I can come in now. It's okay. <laughs> it's it's all good. I'm always around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. Very nice. Thanks for dropping by. It's it's really awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very very. Oh,